hello everyone in this session we will discuss the next compensator is the lag compensator so name itself it is a lagging that means the output always lags the input right so if the system if the system in input applied to a network so we have some network we are applying some input that is the voltage input voltage it produces steady state output it produces a steady state output having phase lag with respect to the input so we will have the phase lag of input then the network is called the lag compensator then the network is called the lag compensator for example we have the input is like this so we have the input input is like this it will be like this this is the vi and we have we will get the output is like this the output voltage is so it will have some lag some lag means it should be it should be started from here sorry it is the input and lag means input will become first this will be in input phase and the lag is after 90 degrees it will go it so that means this is the output output will get the lag if the lead lead means this starting from it is always 90 degrees before it 90 degrees before it okay so we are giving this type of input and we will get this type of output but the output is the steady steady state output okay then the system is called the lag compensator so generally here the important thing is lag compensator is nothing but it is a low pass filter so wherever the lag compensator we are using that is simply a low pass filter that means it will allows only low frequency signals but what about lead lead is high pass filter don't confuse here so one two three lag means three letters here low means three letters so this is the shortcut method okay so if you find out the relation between the output and the input voltage is we will get like this the v naught of s by v i of s the transfer function of output to input is we will get like this 1 plus s tau by 1 plus beta into s tau 1 plus beta into s tau okay this is the transfer function so if you find out if you do the calculation you will get only this transfer function this is the transfer function yes and if you draw the pole zero configuration if you draw the pole zero configuration in s plane we will have like this that is we have one pole so if you take if you consider a pole so this is the pole one plus beta s tau is equal to zero from this s equal to minus 1 by beta tau okay and another this is the pole and what about 0 0 equal to 1 plus s tau is equal to 0 from this we will get s equal to minus 1 by tau this is the 1 0 this is the pole and this is the 0 here so I will write here 1 by tau so 1 by beta tau is the less less value actually beta value is more than 1 actually so that's why pole is nearer to this pole is nearer to imaginary axis this value is less 0 is here the pole is minus 1 by beta tau 0 is minus 1 by tau it is a reverse so in in case of lead compensator here here the zero is available in case of lag compensator here the pole is available both are nearer to imaginary axis so this is the pole zero configuration so if you draw the magnitude and phase plot we will get like this here you know the transfer function 1 plus s tau by 1 plus beta s tau the transfer function is like this so this, that is v naught of s by vi of s equal 1 plus s tau by 1 plus beta into s tau 
so this is the transfer function so in order to draw the magnitude and phase flats we should find out the frequencies okay cut we should find out the corner frequencies so i will compare this with this 1 plus s by omega 1 this is the first thing what about se second thing 1 plus s by omega 2 from this what is omega 1 we will get omega 1 equal 1 by tau here this is the 1 by tau from this what is omega 2 omega 2 equal beta into tau that is 1 by beta tau okay so here the most important thing is omega 2 is less value compared with omega 1 why because beta is greater than 1 beta is greater than 1 All right so by using that so first at omega 2 so if you observe here we, we will draw the plot here we will draw the plot here so initially we don't have any dc gain that's why for the frequency there is no change here the frequency it is fixed for the frequency it is the fixed value but uh, but at omega 2 1 by beta tau we have 1 by beta tau means we have one one pole is there whenever one pole is there at omega 2 we will get minus 20 db so that's why we will get the this is the value that is omega 2 we will get the omega 2 value is like this and at omega 1 what happened at omega 1 omega 1 another 0 will be added whenever 0 will be added minus 20 is become the plus 20 then it will be 0 this will be omega 1 so I will write this omega 2 is 1 by beta tau this is and this is the 1 by tau 1 by tau yes and what about phase so up to 1 by omega tau the phase is the 0 and whenever it reach the 1 by omega tau a 0 will be added 0 will be added means the phase will become minus 90 so it will going at 1 by tau a sorry a, a pole will be added a, and next is at 1 by tau a 0 will be added whenever at 0 will be added it will be get the plus 90 so that's why this is the minus 90 it will follows like this it will follows like this okay so by using this by using this we can find out the maximum frequencies we can find out the maximum frequencies what is the maximum frequency by observing the magnitude plot and phase plot the maximum frequency is represents with omega m that we will get we have a two corner frequencies omega 1 into omega 2 that is omega 1 equal omega 1 is 1 by tau into 1 by beta tau so if you common this you will get 1 by tau root by 1 by beta 1 by beta so what is the maximum phase how we will get the maximum phase the maximum phase equal so we will get the maximum phase that is the phi m we will write sin inverse of it will depends on beta beta minus 1 by beta plus 1 beta minus 1 by beta plus 1 this is always the positive maximum phase is always the positive we will get the some positive phase okay so this is about the this is about the transfer function of the this is about the transfer function of the lag compensator this is the important thing and the maximum phase also the important thing maximum frequency also important thing and maximum phase is also the important thing so these are the important to understand to analyze the lag compensators so to analyze the lag compensators okay yes these are the understand the lag compensator okay so so by using this lag compensator what are the effects we will get so look at here first effect it is the low pass filter so 
if you observe here for low frequency signals it will be allowed otherwise it will become negative gain okay the noise is filtered out so by this low fault filter the noise is filtered out generally whenever the high pass filter is there there is only noise is available from the system the signal by noise is improved so that's why the signal by noise is improved second it is low pass filter bandwidth is decreases wherever low pass filter is there automatically the bandwidth will be decreases right as bandwidth decreases you know the relation rise time is increases it will take more rise time the system response will become slow system response always depends on the rise time fourth improve the steady state performance this is the very very important thing steady state performance is very very important thing for the any system that is reduces the steady state error so we discussed about lot of things about the steady state error that will decrease fifth with lag compensator the system become very sensitive with respect to the variation of the parameter so in this lag compensator it is the system is very sensitive system okay the system is the very sensitive due to the variation of the parameters parameter variation will affect the system performance and lag compensator directly we will sell that it is the pi controller pi means how can we say so by adding one pole pi means proportional integral proportional integral is like this proportional plus integral proportional ante we will proportional will this is kv kp and integral means that is ki by s integral means always integration that means whenever we are removing the integration we will get 1 by s kp is directly that means we are adding a pole we are adding a pole okay so this is about the this is about the lag compensator this is about the lag compensator okay this is a lag compensator transfer function and this is the maximum frequency this is the maximum phase and the importance of the lag compensator okay and we should note one point that is which is important lag compensator or lead compensator so if you compare both compensator uh, here generally lag transient behavior is less important compared with the steady state behavior so transient always transient behavior transient less important compare with steady state behavior compare with the steady state this is very very important thing okay so that's why you should always we look at the steady state performances so that is the reason lag compensator is very important that is the reason lag compensator is very important is important compare with lead compensator so gen that's why generally in all practical systems always low pass filters keep in your mind all practical systems are low pass filters these are nothing but simply are low pass filter that means that will allow low frequency signals not high frequency signals so whenever the high frequency signal allows noise is entered and steady state error will be high okay so this is about the importance of the lag compensator okay i hope all of you understand the session thank you